Hello, France. So I was reading a U.S. history book the other day, and there was a chapter in it about attempts by European explorers to discover the U.S. interior. And so, as I learned, back in the 17th century, two French explorers, Louis Juliet and Jacques Marquette, were the first Europeans to explore the upper Mississippi River. In summer 1673, in what is today Wisconsin, they started traveling down the Mississippi and went all the way to the mouth of the Arkansas River. From there, they traveled back north all the way to the mouth of the Illinois River, and then all the way to where Chicago is today, all in the span of a few months. In total, they traveled thousands of kilometers on the river, and although they were on the same expedition, and, according to contemporary accounts, not competing against each other, I can't help but think of them as rivals. Or perhaps I should say, river rivals. Actually, now that I think about it, those two words sound so similar. Let's investigate to see if they're related. So, although nowadays, rivals are generally considered to be two entities engaged in friendly, or sometimes not-so-friendly competition. Originally, the only criterion for being rivals was that you both had to be neighbors occupying the same river. Rival, in fact, comes from the Latin word rivalis, which has two meanings. One is an adjective meaning pertaining to a rivus, or small river, or stream. And logically enough, rivus is the ancestor of rivalis. And the second meaning of rivalis is one that I found pretty interesting. In Latin, it was also used as a noun to describe two people who are using the same stream as a source of water. Often these two people, or also groups of people, would be on opposite sides of a river, or originally different banks of a body of water. And by extension, they were both vying for access to the same resource. For example, the Romans and the Carthaginians were literally rivals. As in, in the middle of the first millennium BC, they were both active on opposite sides of the Strait of Messina, and even fought a battle there in the First Punic War. In the third and second centuries BC, the two sides would constantly be at war, becoming full-fledged rivals in both the ancient and modern sense of the word, until Rome's final victory over Carthage in 146 BC. So anyway, this word rivalis gradually became a word associated with competition between neighbors. Eventually, rivalis evolved into rival and entered the English language in the late 16th century. Notably, in the 1590s, Shakespeare used the word in a less belligerent context, specifically in his comedy The Two Gentlemen of Verona. He uses the word to describe three rivals, so to speak, who throughout the play are all in pursuit of the same love interest. Anyway, the Latin word rivalis also evolved into equivalent in many modern languages. For example, French, Spanish, and German, among many others. Okay then, rivals hang out by rivers, so then the two words are related. Well, surprisingly, no. The words both come from Latin, but rival, as mentioned, comes from rivalis, whereas river comes from ripa, or literally riverbank. Whence we also get arrive and derive, two words which both originally had riparian origins, so to speak. Oh, lastly, although river and rival are unconnected, rival is related to the Spanish and Portuguese words for river, rio and rio, respectively. Okay, well I guess river and rival don't float the same boat, etymologically speaking at least. But now, our two river explorers, Joliet and Marquette, can they still be considered rivals in either the original or the modern sense of the word? No, not really. Unlike the Romans and the Carthaginians, they got along pretty well, and therefore likely didn't often end up on opposite riverbanks during their travels. So, river rivals? Well, not so much, but rather river partners out to explore the interior of the United States. And so our paths of discovery are, to say the least, quite different. But I think the lesson in both of our stories is similar. When you set out to do some exploration, whether it be physical or etymological, if you search thoroughly enough, you'll definitely discover some pretty cool things. Thanks for watching.